Welcome back to the Wrong Advice Podcast. I'm your host, John Picciuto, and I'm extremely excited to have the one and only CC Ann Lee with us on today. CC, how you doing, Hi. my friend? Hello, hello. It's an honor to be a part of this. I'm so excited to have you on today. Can you uh, give a quick introduction to the listeners and to who you are? So, I my name is CC Ann Lee. I go by CC on the internet. I'm a Web3 photographer, and I do really weird stuff on the internet. Um, I slice up various body parts and put them on other parts of my body and mint them on the blockchain. We're not talking about blockchain today. I would call myself a digital media performance artist, photographer, and illustrator. Mm -hmm. And when did you start taking pictures? Um, About, I guess, like seven years ago. I think I, so I really, really caught on to photography because I was kicked out of um, the illustration program in college. I love school, but I feel like it's a pyramid scheme, but don't get me down that rabbit hole. <laughs> but I was actually kind of kicked out of um, the drawing and painting illustration program when I was like 20 in college. And I was like, well, guess it's time to learn how to be a photographer because I'm staying in this art program. And the rest, and, as they say, is history. Yeah. And so I think that a lot of my process, there's always a, an assemblage or a collage kind of element to it. I always see my photography as raw materials um, that I can sort of splice together in post or, or sort of splice together in life. Um, I had a piece where, um, unfortunately, last Christmas, I was actually alone because I just gotten COVID. And so I was in this hotel room by myself uh, and I went to Walgreens on Christmas and bought a ton of blue tissue paper. Just all they had left was like the Walgreens like gift wrap tissue paper. And I just like bought, I just cleared out the entire aisle, spent like $28 on tissue paper, wrapped my entire hotel room in blue tissue paper and took a bunch of photos and kind of made a stop motion animation out of that, um, which I can actually screen share if you're interested in seeing that particular piece. But that's an example of how I think in my ideation process, I go, I have pre-production in mind and also post-production in mind. Mm -hmm. That was a lot. I hope, I hope that. No, that makes total sense. When you. Running on no sleep right now, but <laughs> love it. When you We're come, when you come through like the process, like you, you mentioned making that, which is, by the way, is a, the fucking coolest photo I think I've ever seen. When you come up with the concept for an idea or for a picture, how do you see it first? Do you see the end result in your mind before you go about creating it? Or is it like a step-by-step -step process in terms of how you end up with the, the final image? I sort of, so my actual ideation and every single artist I've ever asked this, this is a phenomenal question. It's just a purely process question. I love this because I think we're all unique on this. I sort of have a rough intention and outline. If I'm really being very, um, I guess like precise about my ideation process, I will sketch it out in my sketchbook first. But for the most part, it's like, it's sort of this like intention in my mind. I have a general color scheme. I have a general kind of poignant or poetic leaning. And I sort of just lean into the feeling as I go. Mm -hmm. um, so I, maybe to bring, can I do a screen share? Yeah, yeah, please. Awesome. Da, 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 da. Okay, so this is the image that I actually am talking about. And it actually started, oh, look at all my tabs. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it started as a poem and that I wrote while I had COVID. Nice. This is, I mean, th th this is, I think this photograph is how you and I became acquainted via Web3. Um, and I think you did a series of these blue kind of images, correct? Because I think there was another one that I'm thinking of that was you and another model all painted out in blue, or was that just you two times? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. That, oh, that's me too. If it's this one, it's me. Oh, twice. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So they're, they're actually both me. So I think like this demonstrates um, an instance where I guess physical materiality and digitality are kind of like, Co cohering or sort of in dialogue i'm going to try to make this as as like human speak and like not <laughs> art speak as possible yeah because i'm a little rusty on like talking and stuff about my work but i would say that like i did so i didn't 
come out thinking it was going to look like this. Mm -hmm. I just like, here's a bunch of paper. I'm really sad. Time to do a Christmas project by myself in this random hotel room in Hollywood that I, I, I'm, I'm renting. Um, and then it started emerging like this. And I'm like, it's so interesting because like these ish, these um, um, parts of the image on the top right are actually like, they look like paper cutouts, but they're digital. Yeah. So there's this sort of dialogue between like realness, like I, I IRL reality, like me, this 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 person living like inhabiting this body, trying to create this body of work, and yet the work having to exist on a digital platform, which I find to be like a hostage situation sometimes. <laughs> and I'm th I think that there's this coupled with the fact that I just gotten over COVID. Blue, the color of colliding. How do you love a hole in the ozone layer? Who speaks in thinning air through swirling white strands of breath leaving the room? It's a lot of just, um, yeah, I think it's obvious looking back that I had COVID and I was really sad. Yeah. Talk to me about like there's so much that goes into creating a piece of art like this, right? Like constant layering, cutting, manipulating, like the process could be endless. How do you know when something like this is done? Just got to feel it. Yeah. So you just like kind of know when you know. I got to feel it. It's like, it's the thing. It's just like, and sometimes you overwork something. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, um, like the whole, the real process of me like building this room, but there's been no Nobody there was there with me in that hotel room but me. And I feel so bad for those maids. I should have tipped them a lot more than I probably did. <laughs> I shoved all this tissue paper and just balled it up in the closet. It was this, it was this massive, like, five feet across, like, ball of tissue paper. <laughs> so, like, that to me was, like, the real project. Just living in a room covered in toilet, uh, to the, in blue tissue paper from Walgreens that I bought on Christmas Eve by myself. I mean, it's it's... This I think there's a series of photos because I think you've been in blue paint a few times that I've I've seen, um, but it's this level of detail and like individuality in your work that I think initially um, drew me to you as an artist because you create in a manner in a way that is wholly unique and uh, specific to you, which I find cool because a lot of times in my own photography and my own artwork I feel very contrived and repetitive like i don't feel like i'm doing anything new or different um and meanwhile everything you produce has its own uniqueness and individuality which i find fucking so cool that is really nice <laughs> because i feel like shit about myself a lot i mean that is <laughs> That is the pain of an artist, right? Like, I mean, I, I wrestle with yeah. imposter syndrome on a weekly basis. You know, I, I've always found the busier I am, the less I question my abilities, right? So, like, if I'm working constantly, I have no questions about my talent. Exactly. But if I'm not, exactly. yeah. <laughs> and if you're, like, a self-funded kind of, like, emerging artist as I am. So, I tried, like, full disclosure, I tried very, very hard to work in fashion the year I left grad school. And then I realized after a few shoots in Barcelona that were very, very intense, like working with some unprofessionality from certain models and agencies. And I was like, I do not want to do this right now. Fair. And I sort of just retreated. The past year I found NFTs, but I also felt like replicating the productivity you feel within the institution is is quite a challenge when you leave the institution. Mm -hmm. So this is really mostly aimed at artists who like have a background in art school or have like institutional history at all, where you have assignments and deadlines and people judging you for being late and not having like showered and like <laughs> I would say, and I will always stand by my MFA program. I went to the California College of the Arts in San Francisco. And I went to CCA and I will say one thing that I learned about doing grad school in a pandemic is that if the stage disappears overnight, it becomes incredibly hard to believe the performance. Ooh. And so for me, it's like I went from being like, like a grad student, just like constantly like orbiting, obsessing over my work and having people yelling at me that I wasn't doing enough through a computer screen. And then there was no mediation. There was no stop. There was no change. It just became, okay, now I guess I'm selling NFTs. I guess I'm doing fashion. The world's still reopening. This was only merely maybe 13 months ago, if you think about it. Um, I graduated around, it's been a year and a half since I graduated and became a full-time emerging artist. And so then I realized, oh my God, 
I need a job. I need to start hustling my ass off because this is it. We're doing it out here. And I just want to like, I don't want to sugarcoat anything. It's hard sometimes. Yeah. No, it is. <laughs> and, yeah. And I think I wanted to come on this podcast to not, to be as transparent and, you know, what's the word? Real. Yeah, well, uh, honest. This, I wanted to have some courage. I wanted to be transparent I, and, and just be like, it's been a pretty hard year and a half. Truth. And to be a truly, the people that are drawn to like true fine art productivity are not always the people that, that are the best at being their own boss. Ooh. Like, I need a real sergeant. Yeah. <laughs> no, I feel that, dude. Like, I think that's the hardest part about, like, call it my entrepreneurial side or whatever. It's like all the stuff that goes outside of being with my camera in my hand is hard as fuck. Like, it's all hard. Yeah, I mean, it is all hard for sure. But it's like <laughs> so much goes into being your own boss. Like, you, there's just my job never stops. It's like there's that funny quote, like. Oh, I quit my nine to five to work 24 seven. But like, it's true because like, if I'm not always emailing people, DMing people, like seeking out new opportunities, editing stuff from past shoots, like I'm going to fall behind. It's like a very stressful sort of situation because you can always sort of feel like you're doing more. Um, and then as like an individual artist who's trying to create something that is uniquely their own and to their own voice, like finding that sort of um, community around your stuff can be just as equally difficult, you know, and, and especially in a marketplace where like, you know, the NFT space has been chaotic as fuck. And then even like the traditional art world is all over the place. So it can be like incredibly stressful time as, as any sort of artist in, in this post COVID world. I think that COVID really challenged a lot of what we thought was real. The stage. Yeah. The stage, it revealed its fourth wall. It was a massive fourth wall break. <laughs> yeah. It was a moment where all the fucking actors realized they were actors all at once and became like sentient of the fact that they were all staring at the camera like, what the fuck? Yeah. Staring at this camera, this this reminds me of being in school in a pandemic. This reminds me of working and being a teacher in a pandemic. And all of a sudden, I'm just like, do I even know how to function like this anymore? I'm just like out here, like yeah. No, I hear you. Talk to me about like your creative process, um, and and sort of how it's like matured and grown over the last like eighteen months or so. Um, you know, I, the, there's just it's it's I just am so wildly intrigued by how you create and like how your mind works to like produce these images, and I would love to know like you know does there there's pain in some of your pieces, right? So like, do you have to be in a in a dif difficult place mentally to like produce those kind of pieces, like in the the picture that's in the background right now like you're smiling it's happy it's like fucking really beautiful and wonderful like did you have to be in those kind of moods or like can you like create art on like a piece-by-piece -piece basis you know irregardless of how you know regardless of how you're feeling yeah you think this is a happy image yeah that's very funny because i was incredibly depressed and that's oh, why okay. I, I, that's why i edited it the way it was because i wanted to like i was going through a little dumpster fire in my personal life kind of had like a love triangle square thing going on and square. just like <laughs> kind of a mess a clusterfuck that is still a <laughs> allegedly rolling clusterfuck with like some people with kind of a profile in LA and it was just it was a mess I was in LA and I was trying to like not gonna talk shit yeah. allegedly allegedly but my point is, yeah, you can edit that and you can edit this out. But I think I think people see people see these images and I think they're attracted to like, oh, hot fashion butt or like hot fashion bitch. And then they and then the way I'm editing in the last 18 months, I've started to push it further and further towards the object. Mm -hmm. I really, really wanted to like make shit look crazy because that is how I feel. And I feel like I'm sort of mirroring like this digital malaise that we're kind of getting it. Like I had to take a very long, hard break. So I, I felt incredibly galvanized by Web3 last year. Mm -hmm. I went to Art Basel last year. I had the time of my freaking life. It was a little hectic because I just gotten onboarded and I made a sale actually right after Art Basel because my esteemed collaborator, Junie or Juniper, she uh, was modeling with me a lot that year. 
And we went to our basil together and kind of like shelter piece, knit a thing, da, da, da. And I think that like that was really incredible for me, but it's still confining me to the same mediums that are sort of, I feel like I'm being held hostage by, mm -hmm. which is digital computer. And I still feel mostly, I, I, okay. I told, let me just try to make this pithier. I told one of my advisors in college that like at one point in my career, going digital, becoming a digital illustrator and learning how to integrate that with photography saved my illustration. It saved my art practice. Now I'm going the opposite way. Now I'm starting to make things again. I'm like, how will I buy a bunch of recyclable stuff and turn it into a backdrop and then, and then shoot a set in it and commit to that whole process? Um, so I guess it, returning to your question from like two minutes ago, I don't really know how, like my, I'm, I have ADHD hyperactive type, a subtype, very fun. I'm super annoying in person. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, but I also, it helps me free associate. My neurodivergence helps me free associate. And so if I have this like insane idea, like, do I want to just cover, make a bunch of like bed, I'm sitting next to a bed. What if I took this, printed it out a bunch, got a bunch of bed spreads made of this and like turned it into a bed covered with my face and took a shoot, then did a shoot and then did it next week. I think it's about like having sort of a vague sense of direction mm -hmm. and even and allowing and trusting in the process itself. Yeah. Because many times your intuition is so much more intelligent than you are. Yeah. Like I had no idea I was writing a poem about having COVID. I was just writing and, and super sad. I had no idea I was like wrapping something in blue paper because if, and then it looked and I looked back and I'm like, this looks like a hospital bed. Yeah. Like, and I had no idea I was doing any of this. So I was just like, I was just trying to make art, trying to do something because I didn't want to be on a computer screen alone all Christmas, you know? Yeah. Answer totally answer my question. Um, Cause I think it, it just like, it's very informative into like how you go about creating like these just wildly wonderful and unique pieces of art that like, I don't, my brain doesn't work like this. Like I'm not that creative. Like I like to make images that in some way evo like evoke some sort of feeling, but like, I don't need to be feeling that feeling to produce the image. Right. I just need the person that I'm collaborating with to impart that, uh, emotion to what I'm trying to create, if that makes sense. But with you, like, because it's such like a wholly individualistic process from concept to creation, to execution, to editing, it's all in internalized. It doesn't, it sort of feels like you can be in a multiple different sort of head spaces to then go ahead and, and create something awesome, which is fucking really cool. Cause I, I mean, I can't do that. <laughs> yeah. We're all creatives here. Yes. I think, I think the problem with me sometimes though is that I lack boundaries even with myself. Mm -hmm. I love a great, I love a good deadline. And something that I have been struggling a lot with since the advent calendar of crypto winter. Oh my god. <laughs> Cuz I love I was over there. you could. Um <laughs> I had the privilege of speaking at a satellite um, women in NFTs event actually at, in at NFT NYC. And I just stayed in NYC. Oh, nice. And so I just moved to Atlanta to do the things, um, to be in entertainment, to have my hustles and to be on the kind of burgeoning, like new creative city on the East coast. Um, so I guess Part of my issue is that I lack boundaries because what I do is so idiosyncratic. Like it's so not like normal. <laughs> I end up like having good ideas and it doesn't even matter. It's like, who, who even cares if they're good or not? Like the, what matters is that you're making. Yeah. Being committed and dedicated and systematic and like, uh, and I'm not doing fantastic with this right now. I'm actually telling this to myself more than anything, having a schedule, waking up, having a routine after pulling an all nighter, like yeah. <laughs> having a routine, getting up and like maybe sketching in your sketchbook and then start and working on a set and like doing three things for your art practice every day. These things are like, I wish I had somebody to help me automate that because like if I was a photographer or assistant photographer working for a photographer or something like that, there'd be like five people on my team being like, Cece, you need to show up at like 10 a.m. and don't be an idiot and make sure you shower and stuff like that. 
<laughs> and for me, it's like structure is very important. Yeah. Um, I don't know. And it's, I think it's also incredibly potent for your mental health too. And this year, if anything, it's been one of the hardest years of my life, but yeah. I'm so glad it's, I feel that. I mean, I, uh, I I have the benefit of my birthday is the end of every year, right? So, like, my birthday is in 10 days. Um, happy birthday. Wait, what? Right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, when is your birthday? December 17th. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I think it's very easy for me to, like, get very melancholic around this time of year because, like, not only is the year ending, but, like, my year is also ending at the same time, which is, is like... It's a weird thing, but um, yeah. <laughs> where am I going with this? The point ultimately was that like, I find it to be like a time of year where I get very reflective and retrospective on like what I've accomplished and what I haven't accomplished. And like this year for, I feel like for a lot of people has been one of those like wildly sustainable from like an internal growth perspective, but like I've failed in so many other aspects of my life. So it's hard to rectify like internal growth, um, like the peace that I found with like who I am as a person with like the other like shortcomings that I have, like from a creative perspective, from a business perspective, yeah. from all these other areas. Um, and it's just, it's one of those things where like it hits compoundly hard when you're like thinking about your year and then also, oh cool, now I have to celebrate me thankfully i was a twin sister so we get to have like make it all what? be about her and, and yeah yeah you guys are twin sagittarius's oh my god <laughs> i knew i felt connected to you and we have the same birth- dude on my birthday last year it was a big birthday like don't, you can edit this out but like i'm turning 30 yeah everyone can know this it's, 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 it's okay. i lie about my age constantly because I, I happen to work <laughs> yeah that's so funny i uh I mean, I work- I, I'm a performer. Like one of my hustles, I work in entertainment, and like I, I pass as a number of things, and I work with a number of like younger dancers and performers, and it's just sort of like, just. I mean, you pass. look super young. I, I think if you, if if you looked at me and were like, yeah, he looks thirty seven. <laughs> it's like someone would look at you and not be like, you're thirty, but um, yeah. No, but I'm I'm incredibly blessed. I also. Asian genes. It's true. No, Asian, Asian, I, I'm not. I'm, yeah. It's very true. <laughs> um, and the thing is, like, I think people see somebody who presents as like an influencer type online because really my piece is trying to critique influencer culture from its own terrain. Oh. So I'm moving on to TikTok begrudgingly. <laughs> I, uh, I know that feeling. First place, made some sales. Oh my God. Started going haywire on my Twitter. Don't look at my Twitter yet. Follow me on Instagram. <laughs> first. I'm scrubbing my Twitter for weird stuff. Stay for the weird stuff. I don't care anymore. <laughs> I, this is my, this is my world. Y'all are living in it. Uh, it's not the point of social media, but I think I was actually sick with COVID when I turned 29. Yeah. My last year in my twenties. Last year I was sick and I was like writing that poem and then I went to LA because I was a little sad and I couldn't come home and see my family, my horrible loving family. Family. Um, I have a question I'm from the east. Coast. From yeah, sorry, uh, from like a like a birthday perspective, from like a age perspective. Um, for a vast majority of my life, I've always felt like uh, pressure to get something accomplished by certain age numbers. Right. So like throughout my 20s I was like oh I need to do this by 25 and then like when I was 30 I was like oh I need to do this by 30 um and I think just like over the course of COVID and then like through therapy and shit I've sort of learned that like there's no real time to get anything accomplished in life anymore it's like I'm on my own schedule things will happen as they happen um do you feel that way like do you feel um pressure to get anything accomplished by age numbers like create certain number of pieces like develop certain number of sales like do you feel any sort of pressure like that so this is my thing i came i come from an incredibly successful family on paper Mm -hmm. my family system is a clusterfuck shit show emotionally um, but they're, they're everybody in my family is is stand out in their field i would mm-hmm. i would argue like i have a i dropped out of a pre-med program and i was going to this incredibly competitive very hard to get into university when i was a kid and i was on this pre-med track i was there for a whole like eight months and then i totally wigged out like i was that 19 year old girl 
getting sent to the psych ward, having to drop out of like an IV. Oh, nice. That was me. Yeah, I, that was literally me. And that's why um, I, I speak so much about institutional critique because I come from a college town where your worth is measured or, or growing up, my worth was measured upon. I'm Chinese American and I actually come from a very conservative family. <laughs> They love, they love me. They love my pink hair. I had to, I had literally had to give my mom an ultimatum. I was like, do you want to have Cece in your life or do you want to have black hair? Because right now you're getting neither. <laughs> we, need to, we need to figure out a way to actually like heal our family trauma. That's a whole thing. Yeah. You know, my, my point is like, I was a failure. I was a burnout. I was this like, you know, got a near perfect SAT score, got into one of those really hard to get into schools, got some funding for it. And in the end, like, I came back to my hometown at 20 years old, thinking I had utterly destroyed myself. Like mm -hmm. I had an utter ego obliteration moment. <laughs> you know, shout out to University of Chicago. You were awesome. Had an utter ego obliteration moment. I was the laughing stock of the Chinese community in my hometown. And from that moment on, I vowed to myself, like, I, I know that I'm always going to have that age pressure in me. Like I remember getting into that grad program right before my Saturn return began. Um, so I, I, I was turning 27, 28 um, in my master's program. I was like, you have to have this amount of followers. You have to be producing this amount of work. You have to win all the fucking awards in your program because this is a tier two MFA program. Da, 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 da. And I did win all the awards. And then commencement happened. I was still staring at a fucking computer screen. And there's this, I'm going to finish on this note because this relates to what you were saying. There's this concept being battered around in art right now that like the way humans, humanity interacts with time is creating actual time dilation. It's actually changing the way we perceive time is changing time itself. Hmm. So previously it took like six months to get across the ocean. Now you can like instantaneously FaceTime your relative in China on WeChat or something, but also China's crazy right now. And, and, and TikTok is da -da 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 -da. like, my point is yes, Just yes. Like things that I used to think would matter to me at 29, all, at all these big ages, all these scary ages, like 29 was the age that my, I was born when my mother was about to turn 30. Mm -hmm. So this has, has been an incredibly challenging year for me as like, a I'm measure. not a woman I'm not a binary thing, but yeah. <laughs> as somebody who has a vagina and a womb and a uterus, it's just been like, oh my fucking God, like, my mom had a family and a house. Yeah. Well, I think about that a lot too. Thankfully, I've, so I have a, a relatively older father. Um, so like, I think he had me when I was, when he was 38. Yeah. Yeah. 38. So like I'm turning 37. So I, I still got hope, you know, I'm still, still out there possibly going to be in love and married and kids, all those things that I thought I was going to have at 25. I very much could have by 40. Um, but yeah, like it's, it's just one of those like things where like I've grown a lot internally to where I no longer put my like life measured by time because like so much can happen, right? You can get sick. You can get hit by a bus. Like life can end instantaneously. So I don't really put much construct into what I need to accomplish by a certain time anymore. I have so many goals, so many hopes, so many dreams, but there's no timeline for them to be achieved because what's meant to be for me will be for me when it's appropriate, when it's supposed to happen. Um, and I think, especially for someone who's an emerging artist, that would be a, a, a sort of a similarly understood mindset because you're doing your own thing. You're creating your own stuff. So there is nobody to tell you the who, what, when, where, and why of, of your art, which I think is, is pretty cool. Um, I'm super curious about what your feelings are on AI art. Um, it's like fucking prolific as shit right now. It drives me insane. I, I have my own practical reasons for my love or hate, mostly disdain for it. Um, but I am super curious what your feelings are on, on AI art. I'm actively boycotting making a post about it. <laughs> I'm actively boycotting it because I fed a bunch of my super weird images like this and like through the AI generator. And I'm going to show you some. I freaking hate them. And yeah, some of them look a little bit race. Okay. Some of them don't look like me. Most of them, it's it's hard to like, I they don't look like me. Yeah. The thing is like, I'm staring at all these beautiful AI images that look like my friends. And Do I'm like. Do you think AI art is art? 
I don't want to talk about it because <laughs> I'm I'm working on a children's book right now. And I'm just like, well, f me. That f okay. So I've been working two years on this freaking children's book, and it's like, like ugh, okay, cool. This thing could do it in like seven seconds. Load your data and like fucking. Oh my god, six hundred and twenty-five minutes, which was actually less than two hours. Uh, so 120 minutes is gonna spit out like 35 things. I'm angry. Yeah, I I find it I find it wildly interesting because like while it has created a space for anyone to be able to create art, I think to some degree it's a negative in that it now takes away a lot of the hard work that goes into the actual creation of art. Like I've got artist friends, I've got friends of mine who've been on the podcast multiple times who are artists. And I find that in some ways it's going to be great for them, right? It makes the thing that they do so much harder and so much more valuable in my opinion. Um, But there's just like some inherent, I I don't know, there's something I hate about it and there are some things that I appreciate about it. Um, But as someone who is a, you know, emerging artist, a conceptual artist, I I was very interested to see what your feelings were on it because it is a very um, hot button topic these days uh, in the art space for sure. Uh, I've been avoiding Twitter spaces. So I don't want to talk about this. Yeah. Uh, I mean, true, true life. Okay. True life has my entire, I was watching a show. It's called Wednesday. Yeah, me too. Over identifying with Wednesday. It was because drops out of Ivy league, like thinks everything's a scam, like over identifying <laughs> the main character of like psychic proclivities. I'm just like, oh, I can't do this right now. And I was just like, <laughs> Pulling this like psycho all night. Okay. Hear me out. Me and John are friends now. Yeah. I, we don't have to talk to why we're friends, but like, John <laughs> saw me have like a TV breakdown. Hear me Just- out. My thought process on Wednesday I love Jenna Ortega. I think she's fantastic. I don't know if you saw the movie X. She was so good in that. Oh, it's like a fucked up, uh, you know, horror movie. She was so good in that. Um, my thought process on Wednesday, and I really liked it. I enjoyed it a lot. I don't, if it was like an episodic show where like one episode came out every week, I bet I would have hated it. But I think because you can digest this content in a very quick, concise manner, it's hard not to like stuff. It has to be really, really bad for you not to like something. And this show, like I enjoyed it. Like I thought it was well shot. I thought the like the scenes were really cool. The the the, the outfits and, and the costumes were awesome. Like the concept and like the there was no nothing original about it. There wasn't anything that jumped out about me jumped out to me about it being like something holy itself it was just very uh it was a very cliche sort of show right like okay okay yeah i'm sorry not to interject but this reminds me of why this relates to ai generated art okay yes just remember why i started talking about this so I'm watching this show that I think is super deep, but I'm also clearly sleep deprived and all over the place. And then I rewatch it this morning when I'm slightly still sleep deprived, but like less crazy. And I'm like, this is actually really just like a young adult vibe. It's not that deep and it's just kind of fun. But my entire freaking existence is being read for filth by Wednesday. And this is kind of how I feel about the existence of AI generated art. I'm just like, holy shit, like, Quit QED, quit and eat dinner. What is this? Yeah. Like, gotta work with it. Like, I'm gonna start making AI art with my AI art. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm so gonna use bad, it. <laughs> though. I, it. It fails. I, I gave it real art and it failed me. I, I refuse to post it. Yeah. All right. I appreciate that. Like, I'm, I'm sort of glad we're on the same page because, like, to me, it's like, it's one of those things where there, there are two very distinct sides to it. And, like, the, the idea of whether it is or not art is just very interesting to me. Um, I've got something working uh, in the future where I'm going to be having sort of a, a discussion about this further. Um, but I just, I find it wildly interesting because it's just, some people love it. Some people hate it. It's like one of those things that right now it's it's very controversial, which I, I love diving into controversial shit. So that's just my bag. Um, talk to me about like artistic inspiration um, because I feel like you create stuff that is incredibly unique to yourself from an artistic perspective. Um, do you take any inspiration from other artists, photographers, painters, whatever? Um, is there anybody out there that you look at and you're like, yeah, this person is someone who's like I, I use as like inspirational fuel yeah so considering my background is actually an illustrator and like what I I I saw myself until the age of maybe 20 or 21 as like like a drawing painting like but I think that these mediums are very related and I actually approach photography like I have the privilege and like 
just the ability to approach it as like seeing it as a painting first because that was that was my first love was just like being a kid and like watching Sailor Moon and like reading like watching Naruto and just staying up all night drawing anime. I was a very weird kid. I had no friends. Like, oh. <laughs> I saw my deviant art from being 12 and I'm like, damn, that's a pretty good, like, that's some good anime for a 12 year old. But my point is like, um, I approached like, I still think of a lot of great painters. I love Egon Sheila. Mm -hmm. Check out the works. So a lot of great painters from the Art Nouveau period, last century, the Fond de Siècle, period so we're, we're getting with like Egon Sheila we're going with like oh my fucking god I love Klimt I cannot stop looking at Klimt and I think a lot of the ways I do my digital assemblages resemble kind of like art nouveau artists and obviously these are a lot of like no offense kind of old dead white men but um, <laughs> and there's there's different stories that need to be represented and but I, I am very much classically trained in this in the sense that like I know like a lot about art history because it was force fed to us mm -hmm. cool. um and that's great there's actually there's actually a fantastic um artist uh dre seagull boy bam I actually met him at uh he's so cool in person i love him Andreas Siegelbein, but we will, we used to have like this Twitter space where we would just argue back and forth about like which artists we hated because we, we knew the same artists. We had a similar curriculum of like training kind of. Yeah. Um, but I'm actually, so I look a lot at like kind of just, I look a lot at like the New York art scene right mm -hmm. now. So there's some really exciting artists that like my ex partner who I met on a Twitter space is a whole thing. <laughs> That's a place to fall in love for sure. <laughs> oh my god, it's really bad. I'm I'm trying to write like a, a, an op ed piece about it. Like, please do. I would love to read it. Um, I, I'm curious. So, like, you uh, this this okay, cool. Wait, yeah, sorry, I'm I'm ADD out of control. That's right okay. Now. I'm I'm right there with you. Trust me. Um, I'm curious if you've ever taken the uh, so like obviously you create the photos in a physical space. Um, have you created any of these collage type uh, photo stories, photo um, artworks uh, physically? Like you know, cut up a bunch of actual photos of yourself and not just digitally. Like, have you made physical pieces? Oh, you have. Yes. Cool. So if you look at really quickly i don't want to just make this about my instagram because it's making me feel really bad about myself and how no. i haven't really made a lot of real art but like i mean i've done a lot i've, I've well, survived I'm, I'm curious because like so obviously you create a lot from a digital perspective right in a digital space um oh that, this, that these are real sushis um this is actually a, a piece that i did with it's a on foundation with boy meets girl organized by the great Stacey Eagle. Um, but if you look closely, this is taken from actual sushi that I made. Um, the sushi objects. I wish I had a better, better documentation, but you can sort of see the eyes on the sushi. And I am currently working on integrating it into uh, a stop motion film that I can actually now repost and repurpose. Oh, cool. So it's actual sushi with my face on it. And that's the one time I did that. I'm going to do that the fuck again. Please. That's cool. Okay, cool. Yeah, no. Yes, you need to follow her own advice. Just <laughs> Well, you yeah. came to the wrong place because this is the wrong advice podcast. So it's definitely not a place to. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that for us. I love that your birthday is mine too. Come oh, wait, your birthday is the 17th? Yes. Wait a second. Shut the fuck up. I really? know. Oh, my yeah. God. That is wild. Wow. Isn't that that's, crazy? That is insane. Yeah, yeah. Holy Man, we should party. I'm just gonna go to work. <laughs> you know what I work. I'm just gonna go work and like make a ton of money. I don't even care. Good. Yeah, I mean it is a Saturday, so I, I love that for you. Yeah, um, you should just fly to Atlanta on Saturday. We can all have a party with your twin. <laughs> She's definitely not coming to Atlanta. <laughs> There's zero percent chance. Um, Ninety-seven dollar flight. From oh wow, to that's actually not bad. I, I have family in in Georgia, so I, I I have an excuse to come down eventually. Um, but yeah, wow, that's so wild. What what are the chances that two people who met on the internet in fucking Twitter Spaces, Web three, fucking NFT bullshit, end up on a podcast together and they have the same birthday? That has it's to be. That is. This is impossible. It's actually impossible. I literally had like a heart to heart freak out in front of you <laughs> nearly like 16 hours ago and yeah. I still haven't slept. And I was like, I knew I trusted you. There's something wow. kind of like 
safe about you. And like, I didn't even know you were a freaking Sagittarius. Like, I love, like, you should have just been like, yo, I'm a Sagittarius. I'm like, I'm a Sagittarius too, because we're all freaking out, man. All my friends, my friend, I don't want to name names, allegedly, is a high profile Sagittarius. <laughs> He's going through a lot right now. <laughs> I, uh, are going f- a lot future right John now. will lead with the fact that he was a Sagittarius. I've been told by many an ex girlfriends that being a Sagittarius is a terrible thing. So, yeah. Okay. Oh, so it is a terrible thing. <laughs> Sagittarius women, I'm non-binary and queer, but you know what I'm saying. Sagittarius women are more mas okay, are more masculine than like regular women. There's a lot of I I love tarot. I'm I love psychic stuff. Um just just go with it. Yeah. But like I've gotten a lot of readings on the internet where it's like if the Sagittarius woman can learn how to harness her like feminine energy, it'll benefit her. Cause I realize like with my current job in like working at nightlife like it benefits me to lean on my feminine energy and I've been taught through all my years watching a kind of dysfunctional family system and a hyper toxically patriarchal one at that like all my life trying to like be a woman who can be a man and now I have to like be a woman and I'm just like oh my god it's so hard to like do that <laughs> like <laughs> yeah but like, well just to be pretending and to be interested in yeah like to be pretending to be interested in people that you know you're like this is just work for me i don't actually I love mean, you work is work is work is work though yeah. like I, whether you're a shot girl or a bottle girl or you're an entertainer or you're whatever you do in nightlife there's a lot of money to be made in nightlife everywhere trust me i think that like it's i don't know it's taught me a lot about just I mean I always felt kind of like a like a a little boy dressed in girls clothing Hmm. um and if you know me in real life if you know like Cece I I just run around in oversized things like I'm wearing today (laughs) um and then sometimes I actually do feel like when I'm wearing different hats and playing different roles like I'm putting on a sort of hyper feminine performance that's almost jarring to my mythos my ethos as an artist and so in that sense like so and like your self sense of self yeah i mean it's all fractury right like my sense of so you see this like hyper like i don't look like this this is a pretty picture but i do not like look look (laughs) don't sell yourself so short cc (laughs) come on it's funny it's actually really funny take a picture of this yeah can you screenshot this? I think so. I'll screenshot I mean, it. I am recording it, so, yeah. Um, I want this for myself. Wait, <laughs> I, I want to post this on my Instagram. Is that okay? Yeah, go for it. Um, I'll tag you and I'll tag you on Twitter. And- I, uh, I, I, I will say this. So, like, I, I've been a big fan of your work um, for, you know, whatever we've known each other for, like, seven minutes or a year, whatever it's been. With- <laughs> <laughs> whenever we met in those twitter spaces I, i'm like inspired by your work because it is super unique and stuff that like i don't have the imagination for or the creativity for um and, I, and i've really liked getting to know you as a person because you have a big heart and like you care deeply about things and to me i think those are like the best kind of people those are like my people um and it's just been really fun getting to know you and and sort of growing this friendship and i am uh, incredibly appreciative of you coming on my podcast today this has been so much fucking fun and i can't wait to do it again oh, wait i'm gonna take one more picture because i'm sitting here <laughs> sorry <laughs> um wait okay wait that yes i i think that like this is a good photo. I'm sorry. I'm gonna pin this. I'm being. I'm. I'm responding. Like I just. I'm seeing a photo. This is my process. Okay. I'm gonna pin this really quickly. I like this. Like happening live. Yep. Art. Life imitates AI art. I am <laughs> art. Uh, how do I unpin myself? Remove it. So in response to that, watching certain things happen. Watching. I've been lucky enough to see a couple people in my life go from relative nobodies to absolute stardom by their standards overnight when i was in my early 20s i actually got to i was i was in a reality show called monica the medium i was and the new roommate on monica the medium it was it, it was on freeform or abc family and 
I've just seen, and so the show is actually about my roommate, Monica, who is a college age medium and she was going to school at Penn State, which is my hometown. So I, I Penn State represent, I grew up in State College, Pennsylvania, who cares? Nice. Um, but seriously, and it's this beautiful snapshot of my idyllic and deeply weird and twisted, but wonderful, happy valley place that I grew up. But also it's a, a snapshot of me, a super disaffected 21 year old, who was just playing the part of like a skeptical roommate. Um, I signed an NDA, so I'm not gonna talk about it too much, but you can watch the show. It's still on it's still on YouTube, millions of views, who cares? But I have also seen other people that I know in my personal life kind of like skyrocket to fame and then like wind up crazy or, you know, broke or having it bite them in the ass. And it just, it just goes back to like what we were saying earlier, these so-called like, temporal or like time-based markers of when I was when I was 23 I was afraid to turn 25 because I was still in college I graduated college at 26 I finally got so I dropped out of U Chicago and went to Penn State and did the and worked my way through Penn State and like it took me like five and a half years to get through undergrad and that's awesome because at least I got the chance to finish and at least I got into a master's program and that's incredible because I'm not fit for school at all like me come on but like (laughs) in the end what really matters like the cloud doesn't freaking matter it doesn't really get you paid most of the times especially everyone's leeching off of the cloudy like art stars right now the artists themselves don't always know how to like get themselves paid or get contracted or work in a professional manner And what I've learned from that is like, all that fucking matters is this. Showing up for people that show up for you is being accountable, is like caring about people in your creative circle, is like creating that community in a kind of genuine way. And and actually, especially when you're living in like a place like Atlanta or LA where everyone wants to make it, everyone has big dreams. So it it starts to feel like, especially in LA, no, no, no tea, no shade. But it starts to feel like you meet someone, you're like, oh, you're just playing the game too. But beyond the game, there's actual human connection. And I just want to thank you for facilitating that today. Oh, thank you. It's been my absolute that was a pleasure. Long, like, I, I'm so sorry. That was so much. But no, it's okay. It's um, a lot. I, I think your presence means a lot. Oh, thank you so much, CC. You're the best. And uh, I'm super appreciative of your time and, and your friendship. And happy future birthday in 10 days. Happy future. Oh God, I just got my, my boss just texted me. Sorry. <laughs> Happy future birthday. If you want to party in Atlanta in 10 days, come find me. I'll let you <laughs> know. Gonna...